two years on and much has changed in Slovakia. But the passing of time doesn't heal all wounds. The killing of two young people convulsed this country. It transformed its politics, bringing down the Prime Minister and leading to the election of a new Liberal president. But to Jan Kuciak's colleagues, even greater dangers lurk in the shadows, not just to them as journalists, but to the very system of liberal democracy in Slovakia. Nobody uh, in Germany in the 30s and nobody in Czechoslovakia in 1948, nobody knew that uh, it can be the last democratic uh, elections uh, for a long time. And now I see that, uh, that these elections are the most important in, uh, in the new history of, of my country. And that apprehension is largely due to the steady rise of the far-right People's Party, whose leader once dressed in a uniform modelled on the wartime Slovak fascists. Slovakia's far right have long swapped the uniforms for suits, and their leader is now stressing the party's Christian, conservative credentials in a bid to appeal to a wider audience. It's a strategy that has paid off at the ballot box, but the old slurs of Nazis still persist. Many voters like their stridently nationalist and anti-system rhetoric. He's promised to introduce law and order, this man says, and that's the most important thing to me. As many as a dozen parties might enter parliament, each with their own visions of change. So who to choose? It's a big decision for one of Europe's smallest countries, a country looking for leadership and a way ahead. Rob Cameron, BBC News, Bratislava.